Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to take a Sonoff 4 Channel Pro version 2 and use it to control your garage doors. Or, if you only want, a garage door. And I'll do that for you right now. Okay, this is going to get interesting. Um, the the 4 Channel, I do have to tell you up front, Sonoff did send this to me. So, but there was, at this point when they sent it to me, I had no idea that this was going to become a smart controller for my garage doors. But let's get you some of the background done first here. You'll want to take this apart, and I've already done that, and I've got it sitting in the back plate. There's four screws on the back that you will have to remove. Do not, do not do this with power to the device, because you will be working near some potentially hazardous voltages and it's just safer not to do it. So there's uh, two different things you have to change in here. I'm going to switch over to another camera and this you'll have to bear with me a little bit because this one is we're going to do this a little bit freehanded. There is a I'm going to use a little screwdriver as a pointer here. There are two things that you have to change on the Sonoff. First, this switch right here that we see labeled as S6, when you get it, it will be labeled as the zero, it'll be switched to the zero position. You'll want to switch this to zero one. I'm trying to hold this as, as still as I can, folks. Now, the other thing you want to do is go over here to where these little dip switches are that have kind of an orange or reddish tint to them. They're covered by a little cover. And this is the one that is labeled K6 move all four of those, and you don't may not have to do all of them, but I wasn't sure which inputs I was going to use. Move all four to those to the on position or to one. Once you've done that, then t put the cover back on this and you're ready to proceed. So we're going to switch back over to my main camera. And this was a little $20 USB endoscope. And yes, it's called an endoscope for a reason, but I've never used it for that. So that was what I was using, and this is was an interesting use for it. Now, the next thing we'll have to do is we need to go ahead and get this powered up, and the electrical cord is dropped here on me, so let me get this done, and we'll get it plugged in over here to power. So it's going to start, it's blinking, and just for protection, I'm going to put the cover back on, but I'm not going to have the screws in. So you see it's blinking like this, and that's the way it comes up at first. So the way you get this into pairing mode is pick any one of these four switches and hold it for about well, six to seven seconds. And then you'll see it go into the triple flash pattern like that. Okay, now it's in pairing mode. Now we will go over to the screen. Let me t drop my uh, lower third here. And you'll tap on the plus and we'll go with a quick pairing touch option. And make sure your Bluetooth is on. This is how it's going to initially link to it. And then we'll tap next. And this is going to be the SSID credentials. So, and, it, and this is where it may take a little while because depending on how quickly you've gotten it to pairing mode and how quickly you've gotten it into the app, then it may take it a little bit. And it does seem to hang here for just a bit if you don't get them done right away. Now, see, now this is first request. So it should start changing here shortly. Uh, connecting to server, fine. Now this is where you will be able to go in and make the change. So I'll just call it uh, 4CHPRO uh, V2. It's, it's whatever is going to be unique for you. And then we'll drop the keyboard and we'll tap on complete. And okay, so it's going to talk to the device at this point. And see, now my little blue light is kind of hard to see here, but it's on solid. So we're paired. And what you can do to check this is we'll tap on outlet one. And you saw it change. I'm going to hold it up here. Actually, let me switch over to, uh, actually, I want to take it out of full screen here for just a moment. We'll go back to full camera and... I'll bring up the little endoscope. So here is, there we go. We'll just bring it up here so I can show you all four. Now there's the, the Wi-Fi light, so it's locked on solid. So I'll tap channel four, for example, or R4. 
And you notice I just tapped it once on the app, and let's go back to app here. You notice I tapped it just once. Now oh, here, we'll, let's try this. Okay, we'll tap, and you notice on the app it changed once, and then it went off. That is what Sonoff refers to as inching. So, and that's what you've got to have for things to work. So I'll go back here to main camera. Bear with me, that's the first time I've tried to do that one, so I'm amazed it's working this well. So now this is the, the, the real guts of what you've had to do. So let's go back here to the application screen. Got a little more work to do. So if we tap the right arrow here, and then we'll tap on, let's see here, settings. Okay. Now, channel one, okay, it calls it outlet one, but we're going to change that one. In my case, I'm going to call it truck because that's the garage door that my truck is going to come out through. And then we'll change channel two to trailer because I've got a trailer I keep inside the garage when I'm out doing parades for a charity that I work with. So tap confirm. And so now, and see, we're already at the latest version of firmware. So from the time this was made till it was turned off, I mean, till it was shipped, there has not been a newer version of firmware. Uh, there is a vibration switch. I generally keep that turned off because to me, I find it more of an annoyance than anything else because I'm usually watching the screen when I, when I do this. Operations notification, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later. I don't, so far, that's not something I've had to do. So now when you get back to the main screen, we can tap truck. And when you when the screen's going blue, you should be able to look over at your Sonoff, and you'll notice that that relay is cycling. And we'll see if we can hold it up here, and you can see that a little bit better. So we'll tap on the trailer door, which would be channel two. And that's it. I mean, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, if you've not seen some of my videos before, would appreciate your clicking the subscribe button. This will uh, help build my numbers up and let me hopefully get out and get sponsors and we'll attract other companies to me working with their products as a part of the uh, book that I'm working on, which I'm, I'm, I'm looking probably at about oh, June, no later than July getting this out. But there's some more things I want to, to get in. And let's see, turn, I got, I got a lot of buttons sitting over here, which occasionally makes it creative on how to do it. Now, I will, let's see, let's, let's get our little snake cam out here again, and because I, I want to show you something on the front. You will notice on the front chest, let me get this turned around where you can read it. You will notice, uh, of course, now the power will go in right here where it says input. Now, this is where you'll need to look at how you hook this into your garage door controller. The way I've got mine set, I'm using common and NO, which stands for normally open. NC, which is something you probably won't ever use, is normally closed. You want, with having the Sonoff set to uh, the the inching or what I call a, you know, it's a quick on off, you, you don't want that to be sitting on an on all the time. So look on the back of your garage door controller and you probably see two wires coming into it. Uh, take a piece of scrap wire and temporarily short those two terminals out. You won't have to hold it down, but hopefully within about a half a second, no more than a second, you should see your garage door start to raise. So that's your indication that you're probably going to be able to do this. Now, I've got a Chamberlain Security Plus door. So if yours has just two wires and it looks like you're going to a... Uh, on the back of the garage door, if you look, it probably goes to to like two terminals and there may not be any voltage on it. If it is, it's very low voltage because I've got a an LED on inside my controllers that are on the wall that show you whether the door is has got power or if it's flashing that says you've got it electronically locked to where it will not respond from the outside. But as soon as I, you know, I took, a, I think it was a paper clip on mine, shorted out those two terminals well, short, shorting is what I did, but I didn't short them out. I mean, I, I temporarily made a connection, and the garage door immediately came online. 
And so that really, that ended up all I had to do to get things to work is I tap once and then it releases it and the door comes all the way up. And then when I get ready to close it, I would just tap that door again and come down. Now, unfortunately, with this kind of approach, there is no feedback. Uh, if you can tell it's up or down. And that's where I've got some other sensors that I talk about in the book from Samsung Smart Things that gives me an indication remotely if I'm not in front of the door that the door has gone up or down. Now that's where if you get into the operational notifications, if the door has gone up, you should get something that way. But if you don't, having the Samsung Smart Things sensors gives you a third party option of, of how to do it. And at least that the door has gone up or down. So this is, guys on Amazon, this is less than $30. On, on average. So really, this is a very affordable way to, to do it. Minimal wiring. So if you're not comfortable with doing wiring, it's really not going to be a, a big deal. Uh, I would suggest proceeding carefully. Now, this is what we're showing you today, or what I'm showing you today, is just using the Sonoff. I've got three more videos at a minimum planned behind this one. I'm sure to show you how to tie it into Alexa. And there's some it, there's an issue I ran into there, but it's an issue that it's just how how it's going to work. Uh, I've got it working with Google Assistant, and I've got it working with Cortana. And Cortana, in this case, is the one that really surprised me. That I got a little more flexibility with Cortana. I would encourage you. There are some notifications you could turn on where, especially when you, we get into something that we have not really talked about before called IFTTT. It stands for if this, then that's a third party cloud service that we can tie into the Sonoff. And we use it primarily with Cortana, but there's nothing to say you can't use it with the other options that that will tell you, give you more of a logging situation and may make the commands you use a little more makes a little more sense. Uh, I'll go into more details in the other in the videos that I got coming up. I'm hoping to get most of those done this week, and I'm really anxious to get this up and use this permanently because now instead of having to remember to push on a certain button in the truck or make sure I've got the remote with me, now I can do it from voice control. And so for those of you who've already gotten the Royal Viva, guys, this is the secret sauce that lets you tie it in. So really, it's it's pretty straightforward. Again, uh, there's my link there on the bottom for this channel. If you are not currently a subscriber, I would really appreciate your, your subscribing. That's going to help me attract other companies. This will be something that will be showing up in the book. And I'll have the same how-tos in there, and I'll link to the videos. And I'll go into some more discussion that I'm not really doing in, in some of the videos because there's only so much time, and I'm trying to be respectful of that. There are links in the description of where you can buy these things. There is, in addition to the Sonoff, you will need uh, some AC power cord. I found a very reasonable, uh, it's a base with a two wire extension cable. I just cut the outlet piece off and then the rest of it goes into here. I'm not going into those kind of details because if you've seen the other videos or seen anything at all, these, it's really very straightforward. I did like what Sonoff did with this one in that they used push buttons. They got away from the screws. So that really kudos to them because that, that made this a, a lot easier. To the wiring, you're going to need to go from the Sona 4 channel to the back of your garage. It's just some standard bell wire because if you look at what's hooked them now, it's probably that. It's a very finite gauge of wire. It's uh, I think about a, probably a 16 or 18 gauge wire. I'm, I'm probably off a little bit. It's a, it's a single, you need two single conductors a hardware should have that. Hardware store should have that. It's like, I was like, I spent like maybe a dollar, I think, for, for two feet because I, I wired up both the garage doors I've got to this. And this is really very straightforward. You've got the manual actuation buttons here. So if you buy that and say the main garage door controller goes out or you've taken your controllers off the wall and are using the Sonoff, you still now have the buttons for that. And that's something that I'm considering doing. And then with your smartphone, this is the Galaxy S9 Plus that I've been using a lot because that's what gets me to where I can show you pictures like that. So you're seeing directly what I'm dealing with on the phone. And the rest of it is, I mean, I got this done probably, oh, it was easily under 30 minutes, probably a little bit less, but I was proceeding very carefully because I had to look at the 
the documentation they sent with the four channel, it was a little hard to read a small print, but you know, that's, I'm not criticizing Sonoff. That's how they chose to send it. This is something well worth it. Uh, I will be doing other videos showing you how to tie into other three voice control, oh, sorry, can't count, three voice control systems. So thank you very much for your time. Again, please subscribe to the channel. That helps me help you. And then you'll see other links. I've got an email list that if I find any special deals, I'll reach out directly to you with that. Maybe two to three emails a week. I don't think it's going to be that much for a while. And if I post any new videos, I'll let you know there first in case you happen to not have notifications turned on YouTube. Well, I've gone on long enough, but I think you see the real potential for this one. So thank you for your time, and we'll see you soon.